We're speaking today with Dr. Frank Mitlerner of UC Davis. He's uh, perhaps our industry's greatest advocate for the uh, success that we've had in uh, reducing our carbon footprint in animal agriculture. And his research has been uh, very dynamic and his advocacy has been very powerful. Uh, we've seen in recent weeks the issuing of the Eat Lancet report and you've been particularly uh, insightful in challenging some of those assumptions. Doctor, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, good morning. Um, the Eat Lancet report is really a report that uh, was issued to do address two things. The one was the impact of our food system on human health and the other one on planet health. And um, there are certainly certain aspects to the report that I agree with. For example, critiquing the enormous amounts of food waste that we as a nation produce, but also globally. 40%, 40 percent, 4-0, 40 percent of all food produced in this country goes to waste. Clearly something that I agree with needs to be changed. However, how they go about changing it is very different from what I think should happen. For example, they are proposing that we pretty much abandon animal-based diets. So they say they still allow some animal-based food, but it's so minuscule, it's so small, that I think it's a joke. For example, they allow you to eat seven grams, which is a quarter ounce of beef a day, or of pork a day. Or they also allow you one and a half eggs, but not per day, but per week. So I think that these are dietary suggestions that are a joke and not to be taken seriously. Particularly not because I think that one of the two main aspects or two avenues as to why they're recommended is fundamentally flawed. They say that changing our diets to what they suggest, which is basically entirely plant-based, replacing animal-based foods with nuts and legumes, is first not practical and secondly will not have the impact on the environment that they say it will. At least the way they say it in public. Their report, if you look at their report, shows very little, if any, impacts of different diets on the environment. No difference on land use, no difference on water use, no difference on nitrogen, on phosphorus. Negative differences on biodiversity, meaning plant-based diets having more bi biodiversity loss as a result. The only one difference that they show is that on greenhouse gases, saying animal agriculture produces more greenhouse gases leading to climate change. But when I confronted them with how they calculated their greenhouse gases, I did not receive a meaningful response. And here's why I'm concerned about how they calculated it. In their report, they said that they used what's called, and that's what it's called, sorry to be a little technical, global warming potential, GWP20. That's what they said they used, but that's not what they really used. When I followed their calculations, they used a different approach. So the people who are out there in public telling the United Nations, telling Davos, telling people all over the world um, how this diet that they are proposing is beneficial to the environment, basically do not understand those people who wrote the report. And the people who wrote the report uh, introduced lots of mistakes. That report is not the paper worth that it was printed on. We've uh, heard you in other venues uh, talk about that, and we're here at the California Jersey meeting today where you're going to be a featured speaker. Uh, we're talking with you before your presentation, but just give us a, a quick preview of what you might be saying today. Well, I will talk about the uh, true impacts that animal agriculture has on the environment, particularly on climate emissions, on climate-relevant emissions. Uh, it's very important that farmers are clear of what their true contributions are, Clearly, farming has environmental contributions, uh, but we need to know what's right, what's real, what's fact, what's fiction. And uh, the public discourse has a lot of fiction rather than facts, and so I'm here to uh, change uh, some of that storyline. And we appreciate uh, what you've published. We follow your Twitter feed, and uh, you're doing a great service for, for agriculture and particularly livestock agriculture. I'm with Dr. Frank Mitlerner of the University of California, Davis here at Hillmar, California. This is Joel Hastings for DairyBusiness.com.